What's going on, YouTube? Boy, thanks for viewing me today. Man, back another video, man. Today, I'm back to Judge Joe Brown. You know how we get down on Judge Joe Brown. You feel me, man? Today, 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 we reacted to some bad girls. I don't know what the video is about. You know what I'm saying? Because all my reactions are live. I do not fake nothing. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to Illuminati. That's how I got it. But I don't fake nothing. You know what I'm saying? Everything is live and direct. You know what I'm saying? So this is how we get down. You know what I'm saying? Make sure you like, comment, share, subscribe to the channel. Let's get straight to it, y'all. I'm excited, bro, because you know this guy's always violent, bro. How do you think the food gets all over the place? I put it there. How Whoa. about the door being kicked in? I kicked it up. Whoa! I my stuff, I wouldn't have touched oh, hers. Oh, retribution does not count. Bad, bad, bad. Ooh, bad girls you love to hate. Today on Judge Joe Brown. Roommates turn frenemies over borrowed clothes and too many boys. Loss prevention specialist Corinne Curry is suing her former roommate for vandalism, rent, and a utility bill. Defendant Erica Wilkin says the plaintiff instigated everything. Now it's Joe time. You instigated Ms. everything. Curry now that's a stretch. Former roommate, Miss Wilkins, and it appears that you are claiming that she vandalized your personal property, also converted some. And failed to pay the last month's rent and utility bill. Yes. Miss Wilkins, you say you're not the one. And you say some of the plaintiff's other enemies may have done whatever the foul deeds are supposed to have been? Yes. Okay. And I imagine you're denying that you owe for the last month's rent and utility bill. But let's see where we go. Miss Curry, it looks like March 5th of year last, you and the defendant moved in together into an apartment. Now, what happens? Okay, March 5th, we moved in an apartment. About a month or so later, in April, we began arguing about um, borrowing each other's belongings and, you know, basically sharing belongings. So I told her that to keep from... Like having drama about, you know, you let me borrow this or not. Oh, well, I mean, just... what kind of drama you supposed to have? Don't borrow <laughs> my stuff. Right. I told her Simple. that. So, after I told her that, um, my room had a padlock on it. You put a padlock on it. It already had one when I moved in. I put it on there when I moved in. So, after um, after I left for work, I locked my room up. So, all my belongings was in there. And um, on in April, after I left for work... Um, Erica got mad and she was like, okay, you need to just lock up all your stuff in the room or else when you come home, it's going to be missing. You said she wrote threatening notes with soap mm -hmm. on the countertops and on the refrigerator? Yes, she did. And so, so... you two had a squabble on the morning in question. Right. Right? What the hell is that? I think your witness picks you up. The hell? Mm -hmm. Stand up next to the plaintiff, please, ma'am. All right. So your witness picks you up that morning. Yes, she picks me up, and I go to work. So about five minutes after I leave out the house to go to work, Erica's calling my phone. She's blowing up my phone talking about, um, yeah, I took all your food, tore it up, threw it all over the house, and I kicked in your bedroom door, and I, you know, basically vandalized your whole room. Um, after after she called, I went to work. Ew! Was, you know, making my money. Oh, gosh. So I went to work. And I got off, and then um, Nini said that it would be best if I go to her house to avoid, you know, any further drama because we didn't know what else Erica was capable of doing. So after um, after I went to her house, I stayed there for two days, and I came back to take photos and um, make a police report for the damage that had been done. So when the officer got there, we all entered the house. You okay. found, uh, what condition did you find the front door? The front door was unlocked, and it also was an open condom on the handle. So we couldn't even touch the handle because it's an open condom on the door. Now, let's see. From your what? complaint. What? Wait, 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 wait. What? That you weren't the one that actually heard the threats from the defendant, but I see from the witness statement that you had the phone handed right. she, over to you because... Right, I took the phone from Karen. Well, hold on a second. Why did you hand the phone to your witness? Because Erica was going off about Nini saying that when she came to pick me up, there was a um, message that Erica had wrote in the refrigerator. So when she came over, she erased it off, and that's what set Erica off. She was cursing and yelling, so 
Right. And when I answer the phone, she's yelling and cursing, and then she started talking about what Nene did. So I handed her the phone at that point. You just did. Her. Well, I think you're doing something like I don't have time for that here. You talk yeah. to her, whatever. So you heard her. Right. So I, you know, I, I got on the phone. She like, who is this? I said, this is Nene. Well, who told? She was like. Y'all need to come over here and clean up this, that, or whatever. I said, you know, I think this is real childish. Y'all supposed to be roommates. What's the point? I said, then you leaving threatening messages on a refrigerator. I erased it up. Who told you to touch my stuff? Yada, yada, yada. I said, who who writes on a board? I run this. When it's supposed to be equally balanced, you pay your amount. She pay her amount. She mm-hmm. asked you not to touch her stuff. Don't touch it. Well, because you think you bad. She all oh, called me on my name. I'm calm the whole time. I said, okay, that's fine. She, Y'all need to come over here and clean this mess up. I said, I'm not bringing Corinne back today. She's going to stay here. We'll wait. You know, let this calm down. Erica, she just big and bad. She had somebody over there. I hung up the phone. Erica kept on calling. She saw like she little was Romeo. text messages. I told Corinne, I don't deal with drama. Just... Now, you're 31. Yes, sir. And you're 19. Yes, sir. Huh? And... Uh, let's see, what is this? You two contacted the management and they worked up a deal with 19 you pushing 35 you out of the lease since they were of the huh? opinion, apparently, that your continued cohabitation with each other would be both unsafe and improper. So what was the arrangement you worked up with the management? Well, I went to the lease. Me and Nini went to the lease office. Erica was nowhere to be seen after the vandalism. So yes. The leasing office was trying to contact her so we can all come to an agreement and just be done with everything. So Erica never showed up, never answered the phone. So when I get to the leasing office, I told them what had been going on, showed them the police report that I got. And um, the leasing office, they um, said, okay, since, you know, so much going on in this apartment, how about y'all just pay the last month rent and y'all can go about your separate release ways. you from the lease. Mm-hmm. So, okay, so you wound up, according to your sworn complaint, paying the whole thing. I paid the whole thing. So you money. want her share of that final payment. Yes. And you want her share of the last utility bill, yes, which you I paid. I paid that also by myself. Okay. And I had to pay it late because I didn't have enough money to pay for it. Um, for All right, let her speak now. I'm tired of these ones in the red talking, man. Defendant. Finally. What's your defense? Please, My defense is... We had an apartment. I barely knew Corinne like that. I knew the third party of the apartment. It was a three bedroom apartment. And she told me that Corinne would like, like she was, her lease was up in her old apartment. She was moving into. And I was like, okay, well, I barely know Corinne like that. So I was like, okay, well, it's whatever, you know, cause I'll, I'll just be in my own room. She looked like Gunna. So Corinne, you know, I helped my mother and my stepfather helped Corinne move all her stuff from her old apartment. We moved it. We moved it in. I helped Corinne in with everything, setting this stuff up and everything. And she gave me, like, this green tote. So we we moved in. Everything is cool until she tells me that the third party was talking about me. Uh, Now, wait a minute. I thought you didn't know this third party. No, I didn't know Corinne. We'll be right back. She got a nice voice. Hey, look. Listen, Miss Gunner, you got a nice voice going on. Why did you put this stuff on the refrigerator? I didn't put anything on the refrigerator. You didn't write anything. Write anything but what? soap. How do you write soap on a refrigerator? It's show time after this. Bad girls you love to hate today on Judge Joe Brown. We're back with Judge Joe Brown. The plaintiff in this case says an argument with her roommate over barring her things erupted into an all-out war. She says she padlocked her door, the defendant kicked it and trashed their place. Let's see what the judge has to say. So anyway, the two of you are in there. Now, where do you two get into this thing before the first months out where you start having all this disagreement? We got into it where my sister allowed Corinne to use her air mattress because Corinne didn't have a bed. Well, what's that got to do with that? Um, can I finish? He, she, well, I mean, you got to show relevance. I know ahead. that. Yeah, so she allowed Corinne to use the air mattress, and Corinne was having, she got a little job at some club in Atlanta. She started having a lot of men company. Well, what's my, the mattress have to do with that? Because I would have expected a bed. Saying, you could have left the inference. I never would have known it was an air mattress to belong to your sister, and I assumed that the type of activity you are inferring would have been done better on a regular bed, or were you offended because it was done on an air mattress? I wasn't offended in no sort. It's not my mattress. My sister told me to get the mattress from her because she noticed how many dudes was coming in and out of the um, How'd your apartment. sister notice? 
because she came over, like I said, she came over to take me grocery shopping. How many times? Do. She was over there probably like 10 or 12 times. In the first week or so? No, it weeks? was not in the first week. It well, was you in the two second didn't month. get stay in there a whole 30 days. We did. 31, 32? Well, I paid rent twice, so. Well, yeah, because on the twice, it would come up that, guess what? <laughs> Uh, if you're in there for 30 days, you know, you have to pay the rent up front so you can't get out without a 30-day notice, so you would pay the rent twice. Okay, sir. I'm, the, re the relevance of the mattress is that my sister wanted it back and Corinne had a tantrum tantrum, and she goes and takes the green tote that she gave me and dumped it out in my bathroom, and it was hair glue. Oh, I have all she my gave you this a bag? Green, a green tote. She gave it to me. Let me have, as in she's not going to take it back. She can't get mad because my sister wanted her mattress back. Because she indicates all these that companies. you had some uh, an interesting way of carrying out your sister's wishes, but that's another thing. Go ahead. So I what was all the upset about? I text Corinne. I didn't even talk to her. I text her. Says Sarah said put her mattress in um, the other room where the third party was supposed to be staying. She said okay. That was it. I didn't hear from Corinne. I come back home one day. I was out for like almost three or four days at my friend's house. I come home. My toe is dumped out in the restroom. Hair glue is all over my hair that I bought. It's like a lot what of What you say in your complaint is the hair glue was in there with weave hair in the tote bag. <laughs> That's when right. the tote bag hit weave the hair. ground, the glue spilled. It now you're spill. testifying Clearly as somebody... though she did this deliberately. She did. She had to do it deliberately. How Why? did glue just be sprinkled well, all everywhere? Well, your complaint says it was spilled when she dropped, must have spilled when she dropped the bag Correct, on the ground. because I don't blame stuff So now it comes from it must on. have spilled when the drop occurred. Now you're saying she did it deliberately? She and you just to. rolled your eyes at me. I didn't roll my eyes, Yeah, sir. you did. Go ahead. Keep going. Okay, so do it I again. get my stuff take it to my room or whatever, and I called Corinne. I said, Corinne, did you happen to dump the, you're a bum, I'm not going to talk to you, da, 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 She puts someone else on the phone, which is, I guess, her. And you're a bum, Excuse you're me, Well, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. What about the purported threats written in soap on the countertops and that's on the before, refrigerator? That's way before all of this. I tried to call Corinne and talk it to her. She kept cursing Why me out. Why did you put this stuff on the refrigerator? I didn't put anything on the refrigerator. You didn't write anything? Write anything with In what? In soap. How do you write soap on a refrigerator? <laughs> it was a, the dry eraser. So it wasn't soap. Yeah, dry eraser. Dry mark. Okay. You didn't write anything on a refrigerator? I wrote something on my board. I put, like, my doctor's appointment and stuff on there. I didn't write anything You didn't put anything on the front of the, no, uh, the refrigerator? Mm -mm. Yeah, so this I witness is, for some reason, trying to... Wow. Who handwriting is that? She signed it with her name. Mm. Who didn't write the... <laughs> Uh, no. Interesting. <laughs> uh, can I ask a question, please? Who worked downtown Atlanta and had guys running in and out if she worked at Walmart? Well, we haven't got there that, yet. That's the whole point. That's the whole okay. point of the thing. She, <laughs> yes, a friend of mine wrote that. Oh, a friend, friend wrote that. Oh. You had oh. a friend come over and vandalize You're where correct. you live. Because wow. I, I live there. That's I pay rent. That's right. childish, sweetheart. Okay. You're supposed to be grown. This you are mature. too, so. I am. That's why I didn't argue. That's with you. why we're here today. <laughs> we'll be back with more Judge Joe Brown in a moment. So I called her and she said one of the oh, girls man. already, the lady, the manager of the rent place, she said they already got a restraining order on you. She said Corinne came up here with the police. She said just, she said she's yeah, not the police doctor. came and there were pictures taken of the vandalism. Right. It's Joe time after this. Bad girls you love to hate today on Judge Joe Brown. We're back with Judge Joe Brown. The defendant in this case says there was a drama with her new roommate from Jump Street. Arguments over borrowed things, the plan of sex life, and some trash talking resulted in a busted door and a demolished apartment. Let's see what the judge has to say. Okay, now how do you think the food gets all over the place? I put it there because she shouldn't have touched my stuff. And she wasn't woman enough to answer the phone and tell me that she touched my how stuff. How about the so door being stuff. kicked in? I don't know how the door got kicked in, to be honest, because my stuff was still in there. Why would I kick the door in? I'm talking about the door to her room that had the padlock on it. Oh, how was... I kicked it in. <laughs> 
I mean, I'm just saying, she touched my stuff. I'm going to touch your stuff. You're not woman enough to come home and talk about it. That's not woman enough. You're that acting. See, enough. the difference is, is what you're calling not woman enough is uh, a mature way of doing things. And what you are talking about is childish and immature. Mm-hmm. And you say you decided to leave, so you left the front door open and put the key under the carpet. Under the mat, yeah. Now, yeah. why did you do that? Because I wasn't, I wasn't planning on coming back. Well, what do you think was going to happen with the lease that you signed? I was going to go to her and tell her the situation because, for one... Tell who? The, the rent office lady. Well, did you? No, because by the time... I left the apartment. The rent office was closed. It's only open till six. Why didn't you come back the next day? When I tried to come back the next day, she called me and said she's Remember, taking Remember, big out. sister is going around taking you uh, to shop when you need to. You couldn't get her to bring you back to the I office. I need her to take and me back. And for several weeks, everybody's trying to find you, and they can't. That's so why wrong. didn't you pay attention to what's going on instead of dropping it and saying, I'm out of here? That's wrong. That's wrong. Well, you I didn't the go phone. back. Right, because I called her and she said one of the girls oh, already. The she's contradicting herself, the man. They already got a restraining Don't do that. on you. Don't do that. She said Corinne came up here with the police. She said just she said she's yeah, not. Yeah, the police us out came us. and there were pictures taken of the vandalism. Right. Yeah. So I mean, that doesn't do any doggone thing about what happens with this lease agreement. So you just decided she with your little then eighteen year old childish <laughs> self, I'm gonna leave and I'm oh, out of here and that's yeah. it. So I leave the keys under the mat and the front door there open. No key up under that Hold bed. on a second. What kind of ridiculous story is that? Well And then you're talking about you and your sister became aggrieved. You thought she had too many male friends. She did. She she clearly did. You you came in the house at four o'clock in the morning with a dude who had a gun on his hip. He's digging all in the refrigerator. Jealousy. It was another. No, it's not jealousy. Nothing's cute about being a. Here. Whoa. I mean, nothing's cute about that. What's uh, well, nothing's cute weave. about being saying. a fool either? Okay, business? I might. Okay, you might say I'm a fool, but this one still works at Walmart. I'm in college. Okay, Your Honor. My thing is with this whole situation. When we Did went to the there? apartment, it doesn't matter. It does. I was there. Anyway, I've never seen her. When I life. went to the apartment to take Corinne, before we even walked in, I had Corinne call the police because it was a condom on the door. Oh, God. Previous to the police officer coming there, she let us know that the police was out there the night before because Miss Erica had a party and there were complaints. She also indicated to us beforehand that she had encountered with Erica before. Not there, but uh, during a previous situation where she had got into some trouble. So, therefore, when we talked about Erica and said her last name, she gave us a whole rundown about Erica and how Erica was kind of on the crazy side. I told Corinne. I got it. that, but my, I'm, right. my, my thought is, you know you're in a bad but, situation when you're on first name basis with the night shift at the local <laughs> precinct. <laughs> Man, this girl crazy, cuz. She's crazy. Never did a book price cover, bro. Cheap, then leave you in debt? Call one eight seven seven. Yeah, let's get to the point, man. Or visit judgejoebrown.com. This is a grown woman, your roommate. You were 18 at the time. Right. You were a child, and you're trying to tell people what they're doing, and there's a big gap between 18 and 21 plus. And there's a, big there's gap a of very big too. gap between 18 and 31. But I'm paying rent, so she should have no Yeah, you're so paying rent, rent, she is, so what the devil do you okay, have to so do who with who comes over to see her order? as long as they're not disrupted? <laughs> who is your sister? Who are you, though? My sister's not here. That's a 31-year-old <laughs> friend of the plaintiff who is a witness. Okay, well, she so you're talking about your order. sister getting upset <laughs> on the mattress she loaned the plaintiff because there was too much... Uh, potential enjoyment going on <laughs> on the mattress. Correct. And you didn't have any. I suggest you go get your act together. Stop being no. jealous, vindictive. And if the police Ooh. know you on a first name basis, then you need to watch what you're doing. <laughs> this is malicious mischief, it's vandalism, and it's ridiculous. It's malicious, but had she not touched my stuff, I wouldn't have touched oh, her. Oh, retribution does not count. I mean, it does Oh, somewhere. quiet child and grow up you've got fifteen hundred ninety nine dollars worth of actual damages that's 
1,600 to round it off, and I'll give you another 1,000 punitive for a stupid over here who doesn't get the idea. And your cost. What is Irv? What? I'm not going to lie. This is a pretty fair when case. Attack, All right, bro. I'm tired of this woman, bro. I'm tired of this woman, bro. You talk too You Sorry, you. I'm sorry to cut you off. You talk too much. But anyways, man, you know what I'm saying? That was a fair, fair, fair assessment. I'm not going to lie. That was the fairest I've probably seen on this show because he actually heard out both sides. I'm not going to lie. Defendant actually was kind of contradicting herself like a bunch of times. And the point where it's just not believable, bro. And also, just the way she would admit something and then deny it was just crazy, bro. She's narcissistic, you know what I'm saying? And that's not right, you know what I'm saying? Leave your narcissism out the court, you know what I'm saying? If you're going to be narcissistic, leave that at home. Don't make it to the courthouse, you know what I'm saying? Anyways, y'all, if you've made this far, man, I must love to tell you, you know what I'm saying? Make sure like, comment, share, subscribe, new channel, mention boy, bang, so feel me, and I'm out this bit, man. Hey, 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 hey. And one word of advice, too, as well, make sure when y'all, like, renting stuff for your friends, family, make sure you actually know the people, bro. Like, make sure you actually know the people or, like, you have experience living with them or something like that or, like, chilling with them for a long time. Because some people will be different when the night, you know what I'm saying? When it starts getting dark outside, soon it'll be just different, bro. But anyways, y'all, I'm out this bit, man.